So he's decided because with the pay-per-view and all these new shows coming up and <laughs> before the pay-per-view, I want to do something tonight a little bit different, which is I'm going to kind of do a speed run down through the matches, quick overall hitting opinions, uh, quick moments, and then move to the next one, move to the next one, move to the next one. And by doing so, kind of give us time to openly chat um, about different things that we have thoughts on in general, kind of have free flowing conversation. And if anyone's in the stream right now watching or comes in later, watch this VOD, this way allows us to have easier conversation with you. Yeah. Or that was just killing time to let you finish your drink and not die. Oh, I feel good now. So, kicking off tonight's show, instead of our usual suspect in Orange kicking Cassidy, we had the Hardys, which I still want to call them the Hardy Boys whenever they're together, versus the Guns. They are the Hardy Old Men, okay? <laughs> but at the same time, I have successfully been able to drop the Gun Club and just say the Guns. Yeah. Which, yeah, it's, um, it, I mean, it took me almost a year to stop saying ass boy every time. Pain still do it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, I, I feel like I did really well just by moving to gun. Uh, so, with this, uh, guns end up winning after some interference from the Bullet Club Gold towards the end, uh, when Jeff Hardy was about to hit a swanton for the win. That happened. What did you think of the match overall? Yeah, it was it was fine. I feel like it had. I feel like the match was overshadowed. The whole purpose of the match was to set up everything after the match. Oh, yeah. So, and it and it that's how the match felt is like it was there just to set something up. So. It was fine for what it was. Which, what you're referring to is with Bullet Club Gold out there already, they continue to attack the Hardy until Ricky Starks comes out. After Ricky Starks comes out, he, the numbers get the best of him. FTR runs out. There's The numbers game is still getting the best of them slightly. Crowd is waiting forever and forever. Yeah, yeah like it's taking forever. We're like, everybody in the world by this point knows that CM Punk is coming out. I was just like, come on, dude. How long are you going to let your boys get whooped on? The entire crowd like, come out. staring at like, the stage, chanting forever. Yeah, like, come yeah on. there was a there was a, an awkwardly long chant for CM Punk before he came out. <laughs> After they came out uh, and they cleared the house, he basically issues a challenge for a four-on-four -four match for Collision. Yeah. Yay, Collision. <laughs> collision match, yeah. yeah. Then I'll miss. At least this one won't feel like how the other main, the main event of the first collision was just like a thrown together match that was yeah. really long. Because now you have a little bit more rhyme and reason to it. Yeah, now there's a reason for this. So I'm, I'm cool with it. Uh, Let's do it. Next up, we had Jeff Jarrett. Ain't he great? Um, I guess Mark Briscoe. <laughs> in the concession stand brawl match um i'm sure my first note on this match is probably the same thing that you remember first in this match so have fun oh yeah this my first note in this match is definitely when mark briscoe threw all the glizzies at jeff and i'm i'm I, and when i say all the glizzies i mean all of them like every single one at that hot dog stand was tossed at jeff jarrett <laughs> Dude, it's like the gift that everybody uses about a woman when guys are coming at her left and right. It was just literally yeah, probably just 20 hot dogs at a time. With wieners. <laughs> just wieners all over Jeff Jerry. So while they're up in the stands, this is the first time Karen sinks up when Mark has this, uh, the advantage and she sprays stuff in his eyes. Um, it was kind of dark looking. It might have been ketchup, but it probably was more something like a barbecue sauce, I feel like, coloring. Yeah, it, it, I thought it was like mayo ketchup because the bottle looked like it was like ketchup, but lighter. But yeah, when she was spraying it out, it looked a little bit darker. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, which the only reason I even point this out is because the crowd, even though you're in 
the like the concourse and everything, you can hear the uh, crowd chanting "Fuck you, Karen." <laughs> Uh, yeah, she might have got one of the loudest reactions other than when the coin dropped. And then she might have got the loudest reaction. Commentary awkwardly, there's somebody else that sneaks up in all like black and a hat mask and everything else, and they're like, Is that Karen Jared again? It was Sanjay. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing Mark Briscoe off the table through a spot. Uh, but you talked about a little bit earlier. Nice pop of Briscoe spot hitting a choke slam through a table on Jay Lethal of all people. I would have expected maybe on Sanjay Dutt. No. No, it's Jay Lethal's gonna be able to take it better. Because you think an old man's gonna need somebody that can jump up and make him look better as he's doing it. Wait, do and you Jay's that guy? Do you not know the history of Sanjay Dutt? Um He was like an elite cruiserweight, dude. <laughs> oh well, he don't look like one anymore. <laughs> he looks like an elite pencil pusher now. He's one of those early, uh, early TNA guys, which is uh, kind of how they know each other because they were always around each other. Um, Mark Briscoe's able to win with a roll up after like everybody in the world came out in the most overbooked thing ever. Yes. Overall thoughts? How'd you feel about it? Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> um. um Fun for a Jeff Jarrett match, I guess. Yeah, it's, it, it, that's what it was. It was fun. I don't want to see it again. <laughs> like, stop doing this this Jarrett Briscoe thing real soon. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was all right. I'm surprised they didn't but make the... We had half the roster come out. It felt like at the end that we were doing anarchy in the arena. So, honestly, I thought I put this in my notes, but I said it to you while we were watching it. CM Punk comes to AEW and FTR completely forgets about their friend Mark Briscoe. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally only been like three weeks, dude. Hey, hey, they found a new friend. They found a more popular friend. Uh, speaking of popular people... Here was the BCC video backstage where they're basically they're challenging the Elite to a five on five, and we're sitting there confused because Danielson already has his own match, and they had to catch mm -hmm. some. Like, but that leaves the Elite mm -hmm. with three. We figured out real quick, Eddie, um, in another video segment later, that was confirmed. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, by the way, BCC's fifth is Shota Umino, of course. Um, but that was cool. But yeah, they were like, oh, we're challenging. The elite at Forbidden Door. Yeah. But you called it right away, though. But it makes sense. He was in the fight. Yeah. So I was trying to think of who would be close to Eddie. And then you think about it with uh, it's it's Forbidden Door. They should have somebody from New Japan on yeah. the team, too. Has to be in New Japan. And then we were like, no, it couldn't be Kota because you wouldn't do Kota without having Kenny in, in the match. Yeah, he's going to be more directly involved with him. So the only thing I could think right. of was how last year when we got to see Eddie versus Ishii and how much that like he idolized him and loves that man, even though they're not the closest of people, because Eddie said he's bringing in someone he doesn't really trust, but he trusts him more than the elite. It's my best guess, because I don't know a whole lot of them. That was a good guess, a good ass guess. Because I don't know who any of them are either. <laughs> Other than the ones that we've seen already in AE dubs. Next, we had a uh, trios match with Sammy, Chris Jericho, and Minoru Suzuki versus AR Fox, Action Andretti, and Darius Martin. AKA the We Don't Know What to Do with Them crew. That happens when you watch Dante <laughs> Martin's ankle go about five different ways. Yeah. Uh, my first note on this is just Suzuki and Jericho doing the Sammy and Jericho pose together. That was pretty nice. Jericho spin, not as smooth as Sammy's, but uh, you know, I like I like the pairing with Suzuki. Just I didn't even think about that part. That the roles were reversed. I did not even think about that. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, he, if Suzuki did the spin, I would have lost it. <laughs> I would have absolutely lost it if he did the spin. Did not even think about it. Um, I feel like a lot of this match was just, again, to set up what was after the match, which was basically Renee asking Jericho about how it was monumental. Nobody ever seen him and Sting in the same ring before. Um, says Sting, like, he was excited. He's known Sting for a long time. He's greedy, selfish, blah, blah, blah. He shows up for the highest bidder. He's called Sting a whore. Uh, but they challenge him to a six man tag match for Forbidden Door. Keeps running down Jericho until uh, Sting's, Sting's music hits. Basically, accepts it. And we're going to find out who the third member of their team is on Collision. So that's going to be the one big, like, last thing to drop on Collision. Any ideas? I ha I forgot to Google. I meant to do Google it one more way. I couldn't away. remember who they teamed with last year. If. If he hasn't officially had his last match, Great Muda makes all the sense in the world. Mm, yeah. But he, if he officially had his last match. But yeah, I think that I, I'm pretty sure they were involved in his last match. I thought I heard about that somewhere. I don't know. <clears throat> Next we had the stupid blind tag team drawing thing yeah waste of a segment it was like it was a segment to help out the adam cole and jf segment that was it at the time though i was like come on <laughs> by the way his last match was listed be in february so yeah he's done unless they manage to pull out one major surprise yep 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 so it'll be somebody else well, technically after after this was the elite video but we already covered it because of the other stuff earlier so we can jump right into the whole adam cole mjf thing because it, it's story time with adam cole baby <laughs> he says he gets it mjf it was a smart thing to do to say no to the extra five minutes but he wants to point out that he has at uh, MJF never beat him. Now comes MJF. He talks about I'm cool having so many head injuries he can't even keep track of time. And everybody knows MJF was about to be Adam Cole. Cue good yeah. crowd chant again. Bullshit. 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 And this yeah. is when Tony goes to interrupt them both, gets on the mic, pops up, as is like, what the fuck are you doing, Tony? Um, He's like, I have something really nerdy to say to you guys. <laughs> but in stereo. Like that's probably so much fun telling Tony Chavon you to shut up. <laughs> and they, they timed that well. That was perfect. Yeah, that was really good. And we haven't seen Adam Cole be that way towards Sony ever since he came back as a face. As a heel? Hell yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, shut up. <laughs> Tony announces they are the first randomly thrown together for the tag blind tag team eliminator tournament. Um, they go on line yeah. of you want me to wrestle every week? What are you, some kind of sick pervert? <laughs> uh, the most I laughed the entire night, and there's fun little things throughout the entirety of the night. But MJF saying that wrestle every week, <laughs> you're some kind of sick pervert. <laughs> Uh, what <laughs> they don't want to wrestle with each other and then Tanahashi shows up on the screen and once again lays down the challenge for MJF Adam Cole has to goad him into it after and after MJF accepts it he says gives him like that big pat on the shoulder and says good luck partner yep you got this bud I'm out next was Orange Cassidy and Shibata versus Daniel Garcia and Zack Sabre Jr. the Mr. Oops I Ripped My Pants Daniel Garcia. During corner when punches. Big Larry came in and he... I forgot how the rest of the song goes. First note is, is during the commercial, during some corner punches, Garcia just face Fox <laughs> Orange <laughs> Cassidy. <laughs> that was it. That was intense. Uh, the, the fact that the match did not start 
until the commercial break, and then most of the commercial break was just Garcia humping Orange Cassidy's face. <laughs> it was uh, even before he humped AEW, it, he was what right up in there. Yeah, I'm like AEW, what the heck? Yeah, but yeah, his balls were like dragged across Orange Cassidy's face today, and Orange Cassidy better be getting paid. That's all I gotta say. Because uh, you ain't about to drag your balls off of my face like that. <laughs> considering the four wrestlers that were in the match, it was it was a good match and it helped set up to the announcement that was right after because Orange Cassidy accidentally hits the orange punch on his partner Shibata, which allows Garcia to pin him while Zack Sabre Jr. has Orange Cassidy and Nibar. They announce a four-way match at Forbidden Door for the international title and they all basically hold on to the belt for way too long. Yeah, so does that count as taking the champ's belt and losing the belt? So does that mean for sure Orange Cassidy wins? I feel like this is not the time to have him lose. The match literally was just made. Yeah. There yeah. Hasn't been like the proper... I mean, you have a little bit of build with Dan Daniel Garcia, but not necessarily to this specific match here. I don't think so either, but I, I feel like it has to be soon. As much as I don't mind him carrying that title, I just I see it's coming soon. It's Re gotta... Rewind to back a few weeks. It should have been Swerve. <sighs> Speaking of title matches, next on the card, and actually our main event match of the night was Ty Valkyrie versus Chris Satlander. My only notes about this was pretty solid, good match overall. I love Tyle's, Tyle's running German suplex that she slides out to the ring, but Sadlander wins with Wednesday Night Fever. Any big feelings on this way, either way? I don't feel like it was mediocre, but it was good. It was good. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Is I told you during what I felt like is if this match had some kind of buildup other than Ty standing in the back being angry, watching everything statlander does that this would have been this would have felt like more but it didn't really because the feud was just oh ty is in the back watching chris statlander win another match and she doesn't like it <laughs> so <laughs> the end of the show which we we they made it seem like there was going to be two segments eddie announcing the tag team partner for forbidden door and then garcia or sorry danielson calling out Okada, but in reality, it starts with Eddie coming out, dropping the line about saying, I got put a shirt on, I got hurt, and ate too much ice cream lately after surgery. Uh, basically, he talks about Mox being mad because he's teaming with the Bugs, who he doesn't like, but it was Mox who chose to team up with Claudio. Mox eventually makes his way to the ring, saying that Eddie drew the line at Forbidden Door. Eddie says, no, he did by teaming with Mox. Or Claudio, they don't really say a whole lot of anything, but then the BCC attacks. Uh, Danielson starts talking shit. Danielson talking mad shit. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. He's gonna stomp Ishii's face in. Oh, yeah, because that was. doesn't come down here. Because, yeah, he announced Ishii as the and partner. Then the coin drops. As soon as he gets done saying, I'm going to kick his face in if Okada doesn't come down. And then, ting! Of course, the number game works out a little bit because Wheeler Yuta has Okada set up so Danielson can hit a psycho knee. But Okada gets out of the way. He hits Yuta, goes for the Rainmaker on Danielson. He escapes and runs away. And little Yuta, I can't remember what's in the, what's the name? What's her, what, what do I call him usually? And they even called it him that way on TV. Something about him being the annoying bastard or something like that. I don't know. They called him a little shit. A little shit. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> so after all the big pins, and uh, the little shit eats the Rainmaker to end the show. Yeah. Yeah. That was um. It's an interesting segment. 